Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that this morning, as your word, as your heart beat, comes as word this morning, it will minister to every tongue that is in this place. No matter what their situation is, I ask, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that your word will be tailor-made to the unique circumstance of everyone. And out of it this morning, specific testimonies will be birthed this morning through the living word that is released in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask for myself, oh God, the anointing that makes your word effective and brings manifestation. I receive a hundredfold this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. In this place, heal the sick. In this place, raise the dead. In the mighty name of Jesus. We agree this morning that we are partners with you this morning. And through us, signs and wonders will happen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Through us, the atmosphere around us will shift for good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Through us, your glory will be manifested. It will go beyond us. It will reach far and near. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. One more time, put your hands together for this good God. You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. Again, I praise him. I just want to say thank you very much. I couldn't ask for more. Uh, you're awesome. God bless you all. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, this morning, we were still on a glory carrier series. I'm a carrier of God's glory. And if you're not there during the workshop, uh, we uh, minister Dickiness Love. Well, I'm getting used to that now. Dickiness Love um, took us through identity in glory and who we are, who we really are. In God's glory, and it was an awesome time. Uh, we we posted uh, the study on our WhatsApp, so please, if you if you're not there, uh, you can just go listen to it. I guarantee you, you'll be blessed mightily in Jesus' name. At this point in time, I want to change shift gear while we're still in the same series. I am a walking open heaven. Just look at somebody next to say, I am a walking open heaven. I'm a walking open heaven. Because I carry God's glory, I have open heaven in my life. And where I go, heaven goes. That means if I walk into an atmosphere that is dry, if I walk into a place that is heavy, just because I step in there, I'm bringing open heaven. I change the atmosphere. Wherever I go, I make it heaven on earth. I change the geography. I'm not just a thermometer. Tell somebody you're not a thermometer. You are not a thermometer. You are a thermostat. Amen. Are you getting that logic right now? You are a thermostat. You know, right now, if this place is too cold, like some people are complaining, all we have to do is, <laughs> hallelujah. I mean, amen. I just say this, just like more of an aberration. Uh, I'd rather this place is super cold <laughs> than this place is hot. You know, as a pastor, when I'm preaching and I see people wiping their faces, I'm like, oh my, the devil says, oh, that one is not coming back. <laughs> it's not coming back. <laughs> I said, devil, you are a liar. That's why, devil, you are a liar. <laughs> you know, devil won't tell you that person is anointed. Is he blessed? You see, that one is not coming back. <laughs> so the thing about thermostat, thermostat, they have the capacity to change the environment. If it's too hot, they change it. If it's too cold, they reduce it. Thermostats don't complain. They don't complain. They just change things. And that's what you are. The moment I scream, oh, it's too cold, I have fever. But Thomas changes things. And you are a walking open heaven. When I get to a place where there is sadness, where there is heaviness, I just bring it in and just, I just release, boom, joy. When people are just quiet, when I come in there, people laughter just exude because of what I carry. I carry the glory of God in the inside of me. And that's why when I get there, change must happen. The atmosphere must 
shaped. So you are called, you are appointed, and you are anointed to shift atmospheres. To change things around you. That's the atmosphere you carry. In other words, you are on earth, but you are prayed from heaven. Where you are prayed from is very important. Even though you are on earth, you are operating from heaven. So the things that weighs people down does not weigh you down. The weight that brings people down, the spirit that brings people down does not bring you down. Because you are not of this earth. You are just passing through this earth. You are just in this earth. But the struggles, the worries, and the weight does not affect you. It does not affect you, but you are an influencer. Tell somebody you are an influencer. That's who you are. So it is very important you know who you are so that you can live your life to the fullest and manifest in the world you are so that you're not just like mere men. He said, I say unto you, you are gods, but you will die like mere men because you don't know who you are. So your misidentity will delay your, or deny you of your destiny. Your misidentity will deny you of your destiny. So you have to know your identity. Know who you are. When you know who you are, you walk as who you are. And we have so many Christians who are just walking and they're not walking their true identity. And that's why it's like their destiny is either being dropped or is being delayed. It's not because God made a mistake in, prog in the programming he has implanted in them. So you are walking open heaven. A child of God, open heaven is your inheritance. But there's something I realize when we talk about this open heaven. I will emphasize more on it today. Uh, you know, sometimes people pray for things. They pray, God, give me this, give me that. And the greatest enemy of prayers these days among the Christians or in the Christian faith is not really the enemy. I mean, sometimes he can't, he's the enemy, but most times it's also ourselves. Is it possible that most of the enemy, the enemy, number one enemy is ourselves. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24, I'll just paraphrase verse 24. He said, until now you have asked me nothing. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. So the joy of prayers is the answer to prayers. Hear me. The joy of prayers is the answers to prayers. What use is praying? What is the joy in praying when it doesn't bring answers? So the joy of praying is the answers to the prayers in itself. But what if by accident or if intentionally or by way of accident you don't know, you are simply praying for the things that have already been given to you. What joy is it when you're praying for the things that has already been given to you and all you were supposed to do was to enforce it, was to exercise it, was to make it come to happen, but you're saying, I say, God, give me this. And that is what most Christians in their work of faith are going through. Asking God to, to give them the things that he has already given to them. When God said, you should manifest. I already release it. All I want you to do is agree with me and make it manifest. And you see, saying, God, give me this. Give me that. And when it is not happening, there's no joy. The joy of prayers becomes the routine itself. The joy of prayers becomes procedures and forms. Because right now, God will not begin to give you answers he has already given to you. So if that is not happening, that's not happening, they now concord joy. When they say, well, we prayed. Have you seen where people say, man, we prayed. And that is the testimony. <laughs> we prayed. Oh, that place was fire. My joy should be that there was passionate fire. My joy will be that there was testimony in our prayers. It's not, that they've had, it's, not that, it's not that the routine is bad in itself. It's not that the discipline is bad in itself. But I'd rather have the breakthrough in my prayers than just the procedures and forms and routine of praying. You know, so oh, in that place they can pray. In that place there is signs and wonders. I mean, just compare apples to apples. In that place they can pray. And in that place there are testimonies. 
There are signs and wonders. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. That means when devils encounter us, man, it's that they just run into an auto accident that they cannot just recover from. They shall speak with new tongues. And when they take up serpents, serpents, they run away. And if they drink any deadly thing, that when people try to harm you, what happens? It shall not work. It will go back to the sender. That is what God the power God has given you and I. So you can ask him for God to give you what, to, to give you that. But God has given it to you already. But he's just waiting for you to manifest. The signs shall follow those who believe. There's something you carry in the inside of you. You carry the spirit of the resurrected Christ. The same power that was exerted upon Jesus Christ. Even when Pontius Pilate and all the Pharisees and all the enemies, when they thought he was dead, but that same Holy Ghost, the power of God, went into the grave there, shifted everything, and performed a heavenly CPR. And what happens? I said, one, two, three, and all of a sudden, Christ woke up. Oh, Christ woke up. I said, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. Tell people, I'm alive. That same spirit, that same power is what you carry. And because you carry that same power, you are meant to manifest at that same level. As he is, so are we in this world. He didn't say, as he is, so are we in heaven. No, even right here on earth, as he is, so are we. That is what God wants you and I to be. That is what the package of redemption has given to you and I. How can God give us so much? In every day, we are still asking God to give us what he has given to us. And most of us are suffering from overload of what God has given to us. It's just non-functional. So you and I were meant to enjoy an open heaven. An open heaven is a time, it's a place where there is nearness. Heaven and earth, they meet each other. There's a connection. There's heaven and there's earth. And where God dwells in heaven, not because you are a child of God, you carry open heaven. What happens? There's a nearness. The barrier is broken. The limit is no longer there. That is what God has ordained you and I to be by what Christ has done on the cross. That no more barrier. That you carry an open heaven. That means the heavenly realm and the earthly realm, they are together. They have met. And in you, in you, all the barriers has been removed. That means right now, sickness cannot be there anymore because the barrier has been removed. Poverty cannot be there anymore because the barrier has been removed. Bondage cannot be there anymore because the barrier has been removed. God has given us an open heaven. You see, when you know this, you become, you have, you, you carry this presence. You become so conscious of the presence of God. And it will change the way you talk. It will change the way you look at things. In fact, it will show in your thoughts. You, you become so conscious in your thought, in your mind, and, and in, in your thinking, in your thinking. And all of this is so unusual. You become different from everybody. When people are like freaking out and say, oh my God, oh my God. You're, you're, just, you're just calm. And they cannot just tell why you are calm. Because you carry an open heaven, you know who you belong to, you know who you are connected to. You carry an open heaven. You know your father is in heaven, but he's connected to you. Christ told them, he said, look, he said, look, he said, that which I do, I, that which I do is what I see my father do. He said, look at me, I'm not just trying to, like, my life is not a probability. I'm not just trying to figure out what should I do. I'm just, yeah, scratching my head. Oh, God, today is Sunday. What am I going to do? No, I live under an open heaven, and God, I'm, you're my father. You love me so much. You are a good God. I see what you're doing right now. I can spy at you. I know what you're doing right now. You are healing, so I can heal. You are making provision, so I can make provision that there is breakthrough right now in heaven, so on earth here, I can enforce breakthrough. I see you. There's an open heaven. I'm connected to you. So when you have that, there becomes a shift. Even when things are looking as if the, things are looking un, unusual, you have that usual peace of mind because you know who you are connected to. I want to tell you something this morning. An open heaven. An open heaven. It's your inheritance. 
and open heaven is your inheritance. I like in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 1, he said, he said, rent the heaven. Rent the heaven. Oh, that you will rent the heavens, that you will come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence. Let me tell you in life, there are some things that will not shake until the heavens are open. There are some, there are some things that will not be released to you until your heavens are open. But I thank God for who we are in Christ Jesus. Our heavens are already open. So right now, all you have to do is agree with God, what God said he has done for you, and begin to enforce it. We are enforcers of the kingdom agenda. Whatever, if there's no sickness in heaven, on earth there, I decree there's no sickness. If there's no poverty in heaven, I decree on earth there, there's no, there's no poverty. If, there's, if, there's, if people in heaven, there, there's no demon possession, I decree on earth, in my own earth, in my own atmosphere, there shall be no demon oppression. If there's no oppression, in heaven, I decree in the name of Jesus, there's no oppression around me. What has been settled in heaven is my job to settle it on earth here. You have open heaven. One of the things you know is that when we talk about this open heaven, open heaven, uh, you say, well, Pastor, maybe it's just part of the series you are talking about, but what do I stand to gain through this open heaven? You say, you will not desire open heaven until you know what open heaven gives to you. What are the things? What's available to us because of open heaven? What are the things you, that happen to us because of open heaven? One of the things this morning you are, I want you to know is that because of open heaven, the art point of the Holy Spirit has been given to you. Because of open heaven, the art point of the Holy Spirit has been given to you. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open. And he saw the Spirit of God descend like a dove and alighting upon him. I want to tell you, since that day, the heavens has not been closed. No man has the power to go and teach what God has opened. God opened the heavens one for all for Jesus Christ, and that heaven has remained open. It has not been stitched back. And when Christ died on the cross, it was permanently open. He said the veil was torn in two. It's open. And the Holy Ghost has been released because of the open heavens you are now enjoy. And on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, and they heard a sound from heaven, like the sound of a rushing mighty wing, and fire appeared on each one of them. The Holy Ghost has been released because of the open heavens. That's so one of the things you have because of open heaven that is part of your redemption package. I do not know to tell you this church this morning is that because of open heavens, there is provision and there is blessing. Uh, in Jeremiah chapter 28 verse 12, he said, The Lord will open to you his good treasures. The heavens will give you rain to your land in his season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations. You shall not borrow. Speak to somebody this morning. You shall lend to many nations. You shall not borrow. You shall lend to many nations. You shall not borrow. Make that a prayer this morning. You shall lend to many nations. I shall lend to nations. I shall not borrow. I shall be a lender. I shall not be a borrower. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and I'm not the tail. That is my redemptive package. That is my package because I'm a child of God. One of your redemption pack, uh, your, your open heaven, is it? It makes you you get provision, not just provision, a blessing. You know when you say you're, it's a blessing, it simply means that you bless through you, others will be blessed. It means through you, others will be blessed. When there's open heaven in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, it says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this. Let me tell you, this is the only scripture where I had try me now in this. This is the only scripture where God in heaven said, try me. In fact, God says, let's place a bet. Are you getting me? Let's place a bet. And see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. I know there are all kind of teachings out there. Oh, we don't tithe anymore. I say, well, yeah, yeah. I say, Pastor, do you tithe? I say, no, I don't tithe because I give more than my tithe. I'm not, an, I'm not just tied to the Old Testament. I'm not just governed by 10%. God, you have blessed me to a point where 10%, I see it as an insult to you. 
So my faith rose to the point where I give more than 10%. I'll tell, I'll tell you this. When, when I was coming to ministry, and no, the devil would give you all kind of funny things. How are you going to get money? I say, God, you will bring people who will support this ministry. And, and I, I told God, I said, God, you know, and you have to make a demand on your giving. I said, God, you know, in my time as a Christian, either as just a church member or either as a minister supporting another pastor, you know I never withheld. You know no pastor who I served under suffered. When it was within my power to give, to support their work and make it prosper, I did not hold back. And I said, God, I make a demand on that, that now that you are sending me to ministry, I'm going to reap from that. You know, some people are pastors, they will reap from what they sow. <laughs> if you're a pastor, you, those days you were not sowing. And now you can't say, oh, you sow. Oh, were you sowing when you were a minister under somebody? <laughs> So one of the things you enjoy is open heaven. There's provisions, but there's also a blessing. And one of the things is that there will be salvation for others. But one thing I want to say this morning, where there's open heaven, what open heaven gives to you is that there is prophetic revelation of God's throne. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 says, Now it came to pass in the third year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Cheba, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. I want to tell you, when you see visions of God, the way you serve God will change. Nobody will say, come and serve God anymore. Nobody will say, well, we didn't see you in church. We didn't see you in prayers. When you see God for who he is, as I said, I saw the Lord. I froze and I fell down. John the beloved said, when I touched me, I saw God. I fell down. Every one of these men, when they saw God, the vision, the glory was so much that they could not stand. When there's an open heaven in an, in an environment and people see God for who he is, they don't take him lightly. They don't take prayers lightly. They don't take the study of the word lightly. I pray this morning that your heavens will open clearly. You will see God for who he is. You will see God for who he really is. That he deserves to be worshipped. That he deserves to be honored. That he deserves to be respected. When your heavens are open, there's angelic activity. Psalm 109, 103, verse 20, it says, Bless the Lord, you, his angels, who excel in strength and do his word. Who excel in strength and do his word. Where, they are open, where there's an open heaven, you see angels, angels are not sleeping. Angels are on assignment constantly where there are open heavens. And just walk over time where there are open heavens. You know, I had this story um, about angels in America and angels in uh, third world countries. And they, they showed the angels in America very fat because they've not, they've not been walking. <laughs> They're very big. <laughs> they've not been walking. They just they're playing, they're playing poker. <laughs> and they showed the angels in Africa. So, man, man, they were walking over time. They were like, man, these guys are putting us to walk. They say, fall down and die. Hey, angels will stand up. <laughs> By the time the angel finished the next walk, hey, in the name of Jesus, I reverse you. Oh, man, these angels, they were walking. They were very skinny. Angels in third world countries, they are very skinny. Because <laughs> there's a lot of work to be done there. But you see, open heavens, it's, the open heaven, it releases angelic activity in response to God. So if angels are not working on your favor or not working on your side, it is because you have not put them to work. So uh, a month ago, we, we had, um, we had um, a session and our lead pastor was here. And he, he said something about angels. He said, right now, begin to decree in the name of Jesus. Uh, angels, I'm sending you right now to work. I'm sending you right now to offices. And somebody came and said, Pastor, do you know when it was like 9.30 p.m.? I got a letter from a government office approving something. I'm like, who is in the office in 9.30 p.m.? Angels went there. Angels went there. This morning, somebody will put the angels to work. What is that situation? I say, angels, I send you an assignment. Hold somebody, I send you an assignment right now. To that court where they're harassing you, I send you an assignment right now. In that immigration issue, I'm sending you an assignment right now. In that place of work right now where my promotion has been heard, angels, I send you an assignment right now. Open your mouth, send your angels on assignment. 
that resume that has been that has been kept nobody is talking about you right now i send angels to reshuffle that that fire right now yes mashoko bahala how who is in the office in the government in the u.s government office 9 30 p.m i said this is no other than an angel so when the heavens are open angelic activities begin to take place in response to God's command. As I say, bless you the Lord, Jewish angels, who excel in strength and do his word. That's who angels are. Now you see, all the sins we have available to us because of hope in heavens, God's children are not enjoying it because they don't know that they have these opportunities, that they have this benefit. And for the few who are exercising open heaven, is because it's been given to them by revelation. And that's why our text for this morning, we almost uh, skipped it. And I'm just going to read it. I got so excited. Praise the Lord. Uh, we just read uh, Genesis chapter 28. Can we open it? Genesis chapter 28. All right, Genesis chapter 28. Read from verse 10 to 18. I'll read quickly. All right. Now Jacob went from Beersheba and went to, toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and it, its top reached to the heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the angel stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Tell somebody, God will not leave you. God will not leave you in that situation. Whatever you are going through right now, that will not be the last that will be heard about you. That will not be the last that will be heard about you. Everywhere the enemy is mocking you right now, that will not be the last that will be heard about you. Every doctor's report that does not favor you, that will not be the last that will be heard about you. So God said, I will not leave you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob arose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set up as a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been previously loose. Praise the Lord. So one of the things we talked about here is that even though you, you all know what are the things that are that avails to you because of open heaven, but you need a revelation to understand your open heaven. And I want to tell you something. Uh, there's a diagram about spiritual warfare, and in that we have the third heavens, and we have um, the principalities in the second heavens, and we have we on earth here. And the, 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 what theologians have told us is that we have to fight, we have to pray, and until we bust the second heavens where there are principalities, then we can now assess the, the, the third heavens, which are open heavens. Now, that is the Old Testament picture. But child of God, you are in the New Testament, and you are a covenant child, a New Testament Christian. All that has changed. Your position has changed. And that's why he says in um, uh, in this way, he said uh, Ephesians chapter two, verse four, verse six, and has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is your new position. You have been raised with Christ. In the Old Testament, you were sitting on, on the earth there and you were struggling to fight the demons or the principalities, clear them out of the second heavens so you can get into your open heavens. But this is where you're right now. In the New Testament, Christian, you are already seated 
in Christ. You're not seated with Christ. No, you are seated in Christ. When we finally get to heaven, we'll now be sitting with Christ. But right now, you are seated in Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities, far above powers, far above sickness, far above poverty, far above oppressions, far above anything that mocks you. That is where you are seated. So you understand that. So right now, we're not looking... We're not praying for open heaven. You are operating from open heaven. Amen. You're not praying for breakthrough. You're operating from the place of breakthrough. The breakthrough has already been provided. All you need to do is enforce it. Tell somebody, enforce it. Enforce, it. enforce what God has given you. Manifest what God has given you. Manifest what God has given to you. He's a good God. He loves us. He has made these things available to you. So stop asking for what God has given you. Partner with God. Agree with God. And manifest it. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's done in heaven already. So right now we are enforcers of heaven's agenda on earth here. So if God says in heaven there is no sin, it simply means in earth here, sin will not reign over my mortal body. If God says in heaven there is no sickness, I decree, I join heaven and I agree that concerning this my child, sickness will not reign in their body. If God says in heaven there is no bondage, I agree on earth here that there is no bondage concerning me, there is no bondage concerning my life, there is no bondage concerning my child on earth here. I'm simply saying, God, I agree with you. I partner with you. We are operating from the place of breakthrough. We're not looking for breakthrough. God has given it to us already. And that's how we are. So we have the Old Testament theology or perhaps the New Testament version of the Christian. And in this open heaven, there are two dimensions that came together. Heaven and earth, they came together, and Christ is that portal. So in what we read for this morning, we read this morning, Jacob saw a ladder. I said, I saw angels ascending and descending. They were all going up and down to heaven. And Christ came in John chapter 1, verse 51. He told Nathaniel, he said, you will see greater things. Tell somebody you will see greater things. I prophesy life to your life this month. You will see greater things. I know it's just a few days for the month of about to be over, but I declare to your life you will see greater things. You will see greater things. You will see greater things. You will see greater things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. See, Nathaniel, you will see greater things. Nathaniel looked. Greater things. He was looking for something great around him. He said, you will see the Son of Man. You see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So Nathaniel got a revelation. That was the greater thing that Christ is the ladder from earth to heaven. Jacob saw a ladder, but Christ now said, look, let me, not, let me just break it down to you. Let me break it down to you. He said, let me tell you right now, you heard about Jacob's ladder, but let me tell you right now, I am that ladder. Angels, they ascend from heaven, they descend from heaven, and they ascend back to heaven. I am the one. I am the mediator. I came out here, and let me I have heaven's DNA, I have earth's DNA. So, I am the divine connector that links heaven and earth. Without me, without me, without me, nothing works for you as a child of God. And Paul went further. In uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, say the life that I now live, I live in Christ Jesus who died for me. By faith in Christ Jesus. That means in me, I carry Christ, and Christ is that Jacob's ladder. So when you have this understanding, your life changes. The way you live changes. Your, your, your sense of God's presence becomes very clear. You don't live like every other person anymore. It takes this revelation that Christ is that open ladder, that, that open heaven. He is a ladder. So I have Christ in me. In other words, the revelation this morning is that, look, I have Christ in me. I already have open heaven. I'm not asking of open heaven anymore. I already have Christ in me. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 says, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So if you're looking for glory, I have Christ in me. So I already carry glory, the glory that is the open heaven. This is who you are. So the more as you cultivate an understanding of this knowledge, just like Christ lived on earth here, because he carried open heaven, 
When, when, when it got to a place where there are demons, they say, Oh, Jesus, we know you. Why have you come before our time? God is a man who carries open heaven. Even death could not disagree with him. Because it was a man who operated under open heaven. But this morning, I also want you to know, just the fact that you understand who you are now, that you carry open heaven. The focus should not be the open heaven. The focus should be the one who sits on the throne of your open heaven. Let the focus be on the one who sits on the throne of the open heaven. Jacob woke up and called that place Bethel, which means house of God. But later when God came and reintroduced himself, he called, it the, he called that place the house of the God of Bethel. Hear me. Jacob called the place Bethel. Bethel, which means house of God. But when God now came back to Jacob again, what did you call the place? He introduced himself as the God of Bethel. In other words, he said, I'm the God. In other words, I'm the God of the house of God. Did somebody get this one in? He's saying, I'm the God of the house of God. In other words, don't focus on the angelic activity that you saw angels ascending and descending Focus on the God who gives the instructions to the angel. In other words, focus on me as the source and not the resources of open heaven. They are already yours. They are already yours. So focus on the source of the open heavens and not the resources that open heaven gives to you. I want to introduce you this morning to enjoy this open heaven you already have is humility. Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 5, he says something. He said, I need to go to Jerusalem. He said, go, look for a donkey. And they got that donkey. He never said, look for a house. Look for a donkey. And I'm going to put robe upon him. That robe is the mantle of humility. I said, bring him. And I'm going to ride this donkey which represents humility, I'm going to ride this donkey into Jerusalem. In other words, I'm going to ride in humility. I'm going to ride as a savior, not as a conquering king. You are that donkey this morning. Well, that's what God wants to be this morning. As you want to begin to ride on open heavens, God wants you to do it with humility. God wants you to put in the garment of humility. Pride robs you of the benefits of open heaven. Pride makes you an enemy of God. It is pride. Pride, pride elevates yourself and brings God down. And God now begins to oppose you. He gives grace to the humble, but resisted the proud. And one of the, one of the ways you can make sure pride doesn't come into your life is the atmosphere of worship. In the place of worship, what happens? You begin to align with God in humility. You begin to say, God, it's not about me. It's all about you. God, I agree with you that you are the king of kings. You are the Lord of my life. You begin to say, God, this is your, the throne belongs to you. It's not mine. So God, it's a privilege to me to just stand here far away and worship you. Worship helps to align with God in humility. I just want to open standing this morning. Worship. God is a God of open heavens. He sits on the throne. Just lift your voice this morning. Worship him. Worship the one who sits on the throne. Worship the one who sits on the throne. All the heavens, all they do, the stars, all they do is worship him. In other words, they say, we are submitting to you. We agree with you. That you are the only one who deserves to be on that throne. One prayer this morning for saying, God, help me. I receive grace to live a life of humility. So I can, I can enjoy my open heaven. Any kind of pride in me. Any pride in me. The one I know, the one I don't know. Before it brings me down, Father, deliver me. Help me to see it. Help me, O oh God, to see it. Help me, O oh God, to see it.
help me, Father, to say it. Just worship him this morning. Just lift up your hands. Yes, join the heavens, join the stars, and worship him this morning. Yes, Lord.